What's going on everybody? Welcome back to the channel. Again, I am Kyle with Limitless Power Sports Service and Repair. What I'm going to go over today, guys, I'm going to go over how to uh, bypass your Diag plug on your Suzuki's. Uh, it works on the ATVs, it works on the motorcycles. It's all the same Diag plug. They use the same tools. I do have the factory uh, SSD and I do have the factory uh, switch that plugs into it. And I also got a couple of easy ways to do it, which are way cheaper, way less expensive. And uh, everybody's got this stuff usually laying around the house, except for when you need it, then you can't find it. But right now what I got guys, <clears throat> I have what is called the, it's actually called the SDS2. Um, this come from uh, a good friend of mine who's let me borrow, shoot this video real quick. Uh, they're actually uh, uh, a Suzuki shop out in California. But basically this, this tool right here is your factory Suzuki tool where you plug in, you put the VIN numbers in, you can data stream, you can download your data from a known good unit to compare it to a unit that's having issues uh, that comes in that you can't figure out. You can do all that through here onto the computer and figure that out. Also with this, you can plug into your Diag plug and you can check all your codes uh, and also you can check all your stored history codes. That's a pretty big deal uh, if you had an FI light come on and go off and it's no longer active, so it's gonna show a C00 up on your dash when you jump the Diag plug. So this little guy here is actually really nice and handy. It just plugs right into your Diag plug, unless you're gonna go out and test right something, and then you have the other uh, parts of it actually hook up and uh, to your battery so you can actually keep this running and use the uh, little data card on the side to, uh, to data stream all your information that's going on. Uh, super handy tool, <clears throat> I love this thing. If you're just checking codes, you can bypass the VIN number stuff and you go through and check all these other parameters. It kind of automatically picks up what kind of unit you have through the ECU. Uh, super cool tool. Um, Got to keep this thing up to date, especially for you guys who have these at other shops because they're always coming out with new product and new updates for this guy right here. I had to do that when I worked for Suzuki for a while. Love this tool. Great thing to have in a shop. Uh, but here's the next one here. Super simple. This guy right here is just plugs right into your Diag plug. It's a little white six pin plug. Actually, I shouldn't say six pin, but a little six plug right here. Underneath your seat, uh, either passenger seat or the rider seat on a motorcycle, depends on the model. And most of your quads will have this underneath the seat. Uh, and basically all it does, guys, it just jumps from the, I believe it's the black, white, and then from the white with the red tracer, I think off the top of my head is what it was. Uh, and all this does, it plugs in there and you flip this little switch right here and it actually jumps that plug, creates the connection, and it'll show your codes up on your uh, dashboard. Uh, you can look at it on your instrument cluster. Like I said, it'll show C29, C whatever the codes may be. There's a whole ton of different codes that can be for uh, misfires, IEC motors, um, or I, idle speed control motors instead of IEC, so you call them a uh, ISC motor. Um, like I said, misfires, engine temperature controls, all types of different stuff. Anything that has a code is gonna get the code pop up. Uh, it'll be up on your dash. And this little guy right here, it's cool to have, it's nice and handy, but honestly, I mean, if you're not a Suzuki factory dealership, guess what? You're not gonna get handled one of these. You can make one, super simple. You can get these plugs and the switches at pretty much anywhere your local hardware store. The plugs you'll have to order uh, from Suzuki or from uh, another company that actually makes uh, the factory connectors. But the cheapest way, easiest way, if you can find one when you need it, which you never can. I had to run around trying to find one of these things this morning because uh, I thought I had one down here, but I didn't. This is a darn paper clip or even a, a, a jumper wire. Just take it, open the paper clip up, make it fit the size, stick it in the terminal or in the connector, in the terminals between the black and white and the white with red tracer and it does the same thing as that tool with the switch on top does. Um, you know, all your codes will pop up on your dash. You're able to check your TPS to make sure it is set in the right parameter. Um, I will cut out a part of a video I filmed earlier on a, I think it's a 2005 Suzuki King Quad 700 where I had a TPS issue. Uh, and I'll show you guys how to jump the plug on that and uh, show you how to check your codes and check your TPS. Like I said, you'll see it where it'll say C00, which means you have no codes but there's a little dash mark next to that C. If it is not in the center, if it's down on the bottom of the C or on top of the C, your TPS is out of adjustment. Now you can go in and loosen the screws on the sides and uh, slowly turn that and readjust it till that's in the center, tighten it back up, push your throttle in, hold it, watch as it rise to the top, 
let off, give it a little bit, and it'll fall right back down the middle. If it does not fall back down to the center, if it falls below or stays high, you can try to adjust it one more time, but I guarantee that TPS is gonna be bad. Uh, they just, they're electronic, they do eventually go out. You know, they're opening and closing all the time with your thumb on the throttle. So they do have voltage running through them also. Um, there are three or four other ways to test it. You can test the wiring harnesses, you can test the ohms, you can test voltage. Um, Honestly, guys, if it's not going to hold that, that parameter on there, there is an issue with the TPS. So I wouldn't waste my time doing a million other things, trying to figure out, running through every single one of these tests. But buy OEM. Do not buy the Amazon stuff or the Chinese stuff you see on Amazon. I have run across many, many problems with people who buy that stuff. And I'm chasing ghosts, and I find out they bought a Chinese piece of junk off of Amazon. Uh, not Amazon's fault, the company who makes the part and it does not work right. I run across it all the time. Uh, so when you have a Japanese made model, man, it's easier just to buy OEM. I know it's more expensive, but it's gonna work. And it's gonna work right and it's made for what it's supposed to be made for. So I'm gonna go ahead and post the other part of that video along with this, guys. I hope this helps you out. Again, if you have any questions about motorcycles, ATVs, UTVs, give me a holler. You can hit me up at limitlesspowersport78 at gmail. I'll get on my emails and answer you guys back as quick as possible. Again, guys, I appreciate all the support and uh, we'll catch you on the next video. Peace. So now you still have a runnability issue. So what we're gonna do, I'm gonna run you guys through how to take the Diag plug here and you can just jump it, jump it with uh, a little wire from the black and white to the uh, white with a red tracer. And that way you can get the code, any code you have up here to give you the DTCs. And then you can also see where your um, throttle position line is on the code parameter itself. Uh, we're gonna check a few of those things because it does have a runnability problem. Uh, I did change the spark plug when it first came in. It didn't cure his problem at all. Um, the spark plug really didn't look bad, but I figured I'm already there. Let's go ahead and replace it. So now I'm going to take a look at like the throttle position, the uh, idle air, idle speed control motor, and uh, maybe the um, engine coolant temperature sensor. They called it what the ETC on this one, and then you have the ISC, the TP, um, intake air temperature, the IET. Um, and there's a couple other ones. I can't remember all the initials for it right now, but we're going to go ahead and take a look at uh, a few of those. Like I said, I'm going to show you guys how to jump across this, check out what's going on up here, see if this thing has any codes in it. I didn't see a FI code showing up here at all, blinking, so it probably doesn't have any codes, but this way we can check the TPS. He says somebody else has been here in the past and has done some work to it, so I want to check anything that has to do with that. All right, guys, you can see I just took a paper clip and we jumped it across the... Uh, white with red tracer and black with white tracer right here. Now we'll turn the key on. This is incorrect, guys. You can see that already. Uh, it doesn't have any codes, but right here, that line, that is your TPS. That should be in the center of that C, not on the bottom, not up on the top half. As you can see, you give it gas, it goes to the top, and you let off. It's slow, well, it doesn't really slowly, but it goes back down, and now it's at the bottom. It should stop in the center. So what we have to do to adjust that, we'll come down here to the side of the throttle body, and then what we'll do, we'll loosen these two screws on the side of this TPS, and we'll slowly move it until that line ends up in the center. So we'll leave the key on, and we'll adjust that. Uh, it's gonna be hard for me to do with the camera on, guys, so I'm gonna go ahead and do it off camera, and then show you uh, what it looks like when it's correct. All right, guys, it didn't take me very long. As you can see now, it is, oh, that's a horrible glare. It is in the center. Let me turn this light off here. You can see it's in the center now. Give it gas. Should go all the way up to the top. There we go, that's better. Should go all the way to the top, let off. Takes a second, drop back down to the middle. All I did on this, guys, I have a really long snap-on screwdriver. This big guy right here. I just run it right underneath this wiring harness right here, right to that screw up top right there. It's kind of hard to see. Let me try to get a light in there. That screw there. And then you run through this little slot right here to the bottom screw down there. It's kind of hard to see again with the angle. And you barely move that until you get the adjustment just right. As you can see, it's settled. So now I have to do is put it back together, take it for a ride. All right, guys, I just got back from a test ride on that quad, that uh, 05 Suzuki King Quad 700. And it has zero hesitation now, zero. Um, I guess somebody got in there and played with the 
TPS a little bit, got it off. It was reading 26%, I think is what I was reading, uh, at, at an idle, which is completely wrong. As soon as you give that thing a little bit of gas, it was spitting and sputtering, popping, until you really got into it to where the TPS readings could catch up with the motor and the EFI and all that good stuff. So now with the set properly, it has a great idle, uh, amazing throttle response. You can barely touch the gas and start to move and it goes flawlessly. So no issues at all. Uh, so if you guys don't know how to set the TPS or anything like that, don't get in there and start taking apart your uh, throttle bodies and stuff like that because the ISC motors, the TPS, all that stuff has parameters that has to be set in. Um, like I said, it was taken to another shop and had been brought to me because it still had the same issue. And uh, it ended up being the TPS on this thing was a runnability issue. Uh, air cleaner was clean and take care of the throttle body, all that was clean. Uh, so a few things I didn't run through on film, um, just kind of keep the video a little bit shorter. But uh, again, guys, thanks for tuning in. Please subscribe, like, leave a comment, uh, and I appreciate it. Once again, I'm Kyle with Limitless Power Sports Service and Repair. We'll catch you on the next one. Peace.